Okay, I want to title this particular broadcast, Deep Fakes of Faith, The Seven Marks of a False Teacher, Prophet, or Preacher. And I just wanted to go over this topic. We probably all heard the word deep fake nowadays. It's one of those new words that's been circulating in our times. But when it comes to judging and evaluating whether somebody is telling the truth about the Word of God, we've got to be very careful also to uh, spot the deep fakes among the people of God that have been sewed in there. And so we've all heard people who refer to some people who peddle the Word of God for money as like snake oil salesmen, and that's a very befitting term, I would say, because, you know, the great snake has his deceivers he sends out into the world to try to deceive people and cause the people to question the message of the gospel. That's Satan's primary objective in the world. He wants to cast any suspicion on God's character and God's message that he can to keep people deceived and from turning to the true gospel of Jesus Christ and being saved. That's, that's his ultimate mission. He's out on parole right now. He's in the world. He's very alive and active. And, you know, he doesn't want to go down without taking as many people as he possibly can and causing as much destruction and chaos as he can. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. So, Scripture even refers to Satan himself masquerading as an angel of light. And Jesus warned us in advance, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That's Matthew 24, 24. So how can we guard against such deception? How can we uh, spot the snakes among us? Here are some characteristics of a snake, of the snakes. You know, just as uh, Aaron threw down their staff, him and Moses threw down their staff, and it became a snake, it ate up the snake that Pharaoh's evil magicians also, by their own secret arts, threw down their staffs, it became a snake, but truly, the staff of Moses prevailed and swallowed up the snakes of the false magicians of Pharaoh. And so that's why true and proper teaching of the Word of God is very essential. We've got to throw down the staff of the Word of God and let the Word of God swallow up all deceptive snakes and false teachings that have been circulated. And so uh, Paul says in Acts 20, 27 through 35, For I have not hesitated to proclaim the whole will of God, God, Keep watch over yourselves in the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God which he has bought with his own blood. I know after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and they will not spare the flock. Even your own number of men will arise. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw the disciples away after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning you each day and night. Uh, each night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God, to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you by this kind of work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so Paul was making a, uh, <clears throat> a statement. You know, I have provided my own needs with my own hands. I have not asked for lots of money from you guys. I haven't used you for your money. I just proclaim the truth to you. Now we're going to take a look at a passage in Jeremiah 28. And we'll see there was this false prophet by the name of Hananiah. And it says in the fifth month of the same year, in the fourth year, early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azar, uh, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says, the God of Israel says, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon within two years. <clears throat> I will bring back to this place all the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the other exiles of Judah who went into Babylon, to 
declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah, before the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord, he said, Amen, may it, the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill your words you have prophesied, and bring the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back from the place of Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. From early times, prophets who preceded you and me prophesied war, disaster, plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But a prophet who prophesies peace will only be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord if his prediction comes true. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. And he said before the people, This is what the Lord says in the same way I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, off the neck of, the na of all the nations within two years. After this, the prophet Jeremiah went his way. The prophet Hananiah broke off the yoke uh, off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says, You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place I will give you a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all the nations and make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I will even give him control over wild animals. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded the nation to trust lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, I am about to remove you from the face of the earth this very year. You are going to die because you have preached your rebellion against the Lord. In the seventh month of the same year, the prophet Hananiah died. <clears throat> so let's go over some things. What are some key things, key characteristics that make a false prophet? For one, contradictory messages. First off, we see in this story the false prophet Hananiah uh, contradicted what the true prophet Jeremiah said. And, and, uh, and Jeremiah's words were not favorable for the people but who had given themselves over to sin, yet Jeremiah's words were true. But... Uh, Hananiah contradicted it all the way. He tried to contradict and cast confusion. No true preacher of the Word of God says his opinion and is just his feelings over what the Word of God has already said. You see, Jeremiah said, well, you know, basically he said, yeah, I, I hope what you're saying is true, Hananiah. That's what I wish would happen. But nevertheless, hear what the Lord really says. And so, examples in our time include people who have we've all been familiar with this, predicted when the date of Jesus' return would be. Jesus himself said, no one knows the day or the hour, and he added, only the Father in heaven knows that. So no real preacher of the word of God or teacher is going to teach in a way that conflicts what the word of God already says. For example, the Bible calls this or that a sin. It's a sin. A false prophet, preacher, or teacher may cast doubt whether the word of God really meant this or that on some truth that is flat out obvious. False teachers also appeal to sinful desires of people. They're not, they're not just speaking messages that challenge, they're doing, they're casting net with pleasant words that people often want to hear. False teachers or people who claim to be prophets appeal to what sinners want to hear rather than what is biblically true. Peter says in one chapter, uh, one, one chapter of one of his letters, one of the characteristics, these people are springs without water, mist driven by the storm, black as darkness is reserved for them, for they mouth empty boastful words, and by appealing to lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are escaping from those who live in error. Okay, so... What does that mean? Appealing to lustful desires of the flesh. Some false teachers in our time have promoted false gospels that appeal to people's desires for things like riches or sensuality or things like that. You know, we've all seen cults where they've promoted things like polygamy and also you can have multiple wives in their little cult-like religion. And they claim they get this from the Word of God, but they are false teachers leading people astray to destruction and doom, and they themselves will be caught in their destruction and doom. The Bible warns about that. 
They promoted sensual things and they preached more so greed than the actual gospel. The actual gospel teaches we should repent of sins and make Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives. Period. Jesus Christ, Lord of our lives. Plain and simple. Uh, he's not a genie or j to just grant us the wishes or make us rich and happy. That's not how Jesus Christ works. Carnal desires, let's, let's unpack what a carnal desire is. In essence, anything sensual that appeals to the senses or desires human beings naturally have. False teachers use fleshly bait to draw a crowd. Okay, third bull bullet point. False teachers say merely what people want to hear just to get support. For a time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, they will suit their own the, instead to suit their own desires. They will gather around them a number of teachers who say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn away. They'll, they will turn their ears away from truth and turn aside to myths. That is Second Timothy four three through four. Many are drawn to false versions of the gospel. Many people are drawn to false versions of the gospel. Uh, uh, and Christianity to suit their desires, as as Second Peter says, uh, instead of submitting to God and asking, Lord, what do you desire? See, that's the ultimate thing about the Christian faith: is it's no longer about what do I desire, but Lord, what do you desire? Why did you create me? Why did you make me? What purpose do you have for me to carry out to do your will on earth? That is, and that is the most fulfilling thing we could ever be a part of, is to do what God ultimately created us to do. So, <clears throat> uh, and many are drawn to false versions of Christianity to suit their desires instead of submitting to God and asking, Lord, what do you want for my life? Fourth bullet point. False prophets, preachers, and teachers make false predictions. That's, this should be a no-brainer, but apparently... Oftentimes people do get confused. Hananiah was no exception. He predicted that the people would return from Babylon within two years. But they stayed there for actually 70 years. Okay? Automatically, he already falls. Early in Deuteronomy, God warned that only if a prophet's prediction came to pass were they truly sent by him. And also he added something else, another qualifier. Even if the prediction does take place... The person was still considered a false prophet if they made a prediction and encouraged people to sin by turning to follow other gods. Because there is such a thing called divination where you can make some predictions about the future but you use dark sorcery and witchcraft to make spirits of divination not from God. Not from God. So anyone who claims they're a Christian that is dabbling with divination or the occult they are needing to repent of their sins and get on their face and ask the Lord's forgiveness because Jesus uh, and the Bible never, never okay with witchcraft, never okay with the cult. God says, if you want to get information, you get it from me. You don't dabble in dark stuff to get it. It's like if you, uh, if you wanted your kids to find out something about uh, some adult matter, you wouldn't want them going to the wrong source to get their their information about something like drugs or sex from just anybody. You would want them to come to you and ask you because you, as your as their parent, their father and mother, you want what's best for them, and you're not going to give them information they don't really that is too much for them. You're going to tell them just basically what they need to know, and you're not going to go beyond that. And there's some reason there's sometimes reasons why God doesn't get into all the details about the supernatural and the spiritual stuff out there. There's a gross human fixation, I think, to fixate on the supernatural and the unseen. But all we can really know about that stuff is what's in all, God's Word already. And God says, don't mess with it. Okay? And so, early on... Okay, so, and, you know, we'll read this passage in Deuteronomy. It says, And if the sign or wonder uh, spoken takes place, the prophet says, Let us follow other gods. Gods you have not known, and let us worship them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. It is the Lord your God you must follow, and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him. Serve him and hold fast to him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death for inciting rebellion against the Lord your God. 
who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. The prophet or dreamer, oh, the, that prophet or dreamer tried to turn you away from the way of the Lord your God commanded you to follow. You must purge the evil from among you. That's Deuteronomy 13, 2 through 5. Okay, in the law, false prophets received quite a severe harsh sentence. They were actually got the death sentence. False prophecy is very serious in the eyes of God. Uh, fifth bullet point. False prophets do not aim... <coughs> Sorry, got a, got a frog in my throat. Uh, false prophets do not aim primarily to turn people from sin. Uh, that's another thing. I did not sing these prophets, yet you have run after their me they have run with their messages, they did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. I, he said, I did not speak to them, yet they have proph uh, prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from e their evil ways and from their evil deeds. That's Jeremiah 23, uh, uh, 21 through 22. True preaching has a number one goal in mind, getting people to turn from sin and turn back to the Lord. False prophets really do not emphasize that. False prophets put more weight, and this is a six bullet point, false prophets put more weight on visions and dreams of the Word of God. And granted, God, I believe, can still use vis visions and dreams to speak to us, yet none will conject contradict what the Word of God has already clearly laid out, what the living Word of God has already spelled out. Uh, you will hear someone, if you hear someone who talks more about the dreams and visions than what Scripture actually says, that's a red flag. And we see here, see here I have heard what the prophets who say that prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy delusions of their own mind? They think the dreams they tell one another will make people forget my name. Forget my name and their ancestors who forget my name, uh, just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal worship. Let the prophet who has a dream recount his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what does straw have to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is not my word like a fire or and like a hammer that breaks rocks to pieces? That's Jeremiah 23, 25 through 29. Then we'll see in Jude, in the New Testament, it says, In the very same way, on the strength of their these, uh, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, Michael, when disputing with the devil of the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn or slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, the very things they do not understand by instinct as reaction, uh, irrational animals do will destroy them. Woe to them, they have taken the way of Cain, Cain. They have rushed to profit into Balaam's error. They have destroyed, they have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, tossing, uh, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness is reserved. Wow. Seventh bullet point. False prophets and teachers often contradict the faith by how they live. And we'll see that in Jeremiah 29, 21 through 23. Two false prophets, Hananiah, uh, not Hananiah, but uh, Zedekiah and Ahab. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about Ahab son of Kedalah and Zedekiah son of Maseah who prophesies lies to you in my name, I will deliver them into the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will put them to death before your very eyes because of them. The exiles of Judah who are in Babylon will use this curse. May the Lord treat you like Zedekiah and Ahab, who the king of Babylon burned in the fire, for they have done outrageous things in Israel. They have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives, and in my name uttered lies, which I did not authorize. I know it, and I am witness of it. Two false prophets here were mentioned by the names of Ahab and Zedekiah. They were sexually immoral men and liars. 
the lifestyle of Bruising claiming to speak in the name of the Lord is worth observation. In the letter of Titus in the New Testament, it describes false believers in this way. They claim to know God, but their actions, they deny them. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for doing anything good. That's Titus 1.16. It is also uh, says there is a type of person who, quote, who having a form of godliness denies its power, uh, meaning that they can act religious and act Christian and say Christian things, but their lifestyles say they truly do not belong to Christ. God bless.